Well, at this time, I'd like to invite Sean to come. Sean Wood is here from World Vision Canada. Sean uh, is part of the BC, we're always part of the World Vision Canada team across Canada, but he particularly serves in helping churches in the province of British Columbia really connect into the work that God is doing. And very excited that Sean is here. We've got an exciting partnership to continue sharing with you about an opportunity we have to, uh, to be involved even more in the good work that God is doing. Sean is going to share today, and then I'm going to come up at the end. But I just thought I'd pray for you, Sean, as we get going today. Would you join with me? Lord Jesus, we just offer this time to you and ask that we be receptive to all that you have. Bless Sean as he shares with us um, and all of us together. May we capture a vision, Lord Jesus, of what you want to do to see lives transformed. And so we are here and we are ready. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Tom. Well, what a joy it is to be with you today and uh, a true honor. I'm just going to adjust this here. Oh, I've been looking forward to today, and I'm really enjoying getting to know your pastor. Tom's such a great guy, isn't he? I mean, that's my experience. Um, so grateful for him and the team. Um, I've had some interaction with the team as well. And um, so, again, it's just so good to be with you uh, today. Well, when I was young, I was a really shy boy. Now, there's, there's shy... And then there's shy. Looking back, I was um, really shy. Like, I was, I was one of those, um, well, my perspective was I was like in a bubble. And I was observing the world around me. And um, I felt like um, I approached others with a, a sense of apprehension and fear. And that was my uh, experience. Um, as, as a little boy. Now, I've learned a lot about myself over the years. And uh, one of those uh, things that I've learned about Sean is he feels deeply. And um, I'm very uh, attuned to things around me. So, for instance, I can feel this room right now um, in color. Like, you know, and, and I can feel now... That can have an advantage, but sometimes when you see the world in technicolor, you can be distracted. And uh, when I started speaking, um, it would freeze me up. And I remember in, in grade eight doing a speech, and I got up, and I did, uh, you know, I had prepared so well for this. And I said, today my speech is on... And that was the end of my speech that day. It was on Louis Riel, by the way. So good, too. Um, but I, I've learned that I can often make uh, social comparisons. I really like to be liked. And, um, well, I was extremely uh, shy going into high school. And um, I had a youth leader who was one of the kids' uh, parents. And he took a, a real interest in me. And uh, it was obvious that I was shy, and it was difficult for me uh, in some ways to interact the same with than my peers. But he approached me and um, affirmed uh, that I had a lot to offer. And he said, Sean, this may be overwhelming for you, but do you want to be the lead in our upcoming play? Now, this play was a big deal. Now, he asked me if I want to be the lead. And I'm like, of course I was overwhelmed. But the fact that he took an interest in me and saw me, it pierced the apprehension and the fear that often paralyzed me and overwhelmed me when I was young. The fact that he approached me with a chance, he dared me and provided uh, a chance and a choice that was so significant for me. And as I look back, I really felt that that in, in many ways provided an opportunity for me to do something that I felt was unattainable. I mean, if you ask me, you know, if any of my peers said, hey, why don't you do the lead for the play? You know, I think we would all laugh together, right? <laughs> if you're like, that's crazy. 
But he provided the opportunity for me to choose to step into that role. Now, I think um, that has been quite profound for me. He offered me that opportunity, and I chose to stand up. And I took the opportunity to uh, be able to stand in front of a public audience and do my very best to provide something of value. Looking back at that moment, that was a significant moment that built, started building confidence. And um, who, who, would, who would have thought at that time, most of my career path has been in standing before others, sometimes small groups of professionals, and sometimes in audiences as large of, as over 5,000 people. Well, that is because I was given an opportunity to, to choose growth and change, and I stepped into it. The opportunity to choose is exciting, and it can cause a transformation in our lives. Today, we're going to consider a story in which uh, we see the power of choice at work. We see what happened for someone who was stuck, but then was given the opportunity to choose. It may be familiar to a lot of you, this story. Um, Jesus hears the, heals the invalid at the pool of Bethsaida in John chapter 5. Now, usually we focus on the implications of Jesus doing healing on the Sabbath. Um, but I'd like us to consider the first part of the story today. So we're going to look um, into Scripture. Now, whether or not you, um, um, you can follow on the screen, or um, I often use my smartphone, or, or if you have um, a Bible in hand, you can turn to John 5 if you do. And uh, let, me, let me read this for us. Afterward, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish holy days. Inside the city, near the Sheep Gate, was the pool of Bethsaida with five covered porches. Crowds of sick people, blind, lame, or paralyzed, lay on the porches. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him and knew he had been ill for a long time, he asked him, would you like to get well? I can't, sir, the sick man said, for I have no one to put me in the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else always gets there ahead of me. Jesus told him, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. Instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up his sleeping mat and began walking. Now listen to Jesus' question. Do you want to get well? Now that might seem strange for a lot of us. It's one of those questions that someone asks you and it's like, well, you know the answer, right? Come on. I mean, it's almost 40 years. And uh, however, not necessarily so simple. Imagine being in this state for 38 years. What happens is you start to develop your identity around your problem and to be able to step out of that, to be able to have the courage uh, to do that, means that he would need to reframe his whole sense of self. What would that be like? And he would need to trust Jesus in a way that really, really involved personal action and just giving of himself. For him, though, Jesus' question 
gave him choice. Isn't that great? It gave him a choice. Do you want to get well? Jesus' question pierced his doubting, his depressed heart. He wanted healing, but he needed faith. Healing was, wasn't something that was just done to him. It was done, or it was a, an opportunity for him to participate in what was happening. Giving him a choice made Jesus' miracle so much more significant. Now, the idea of choice is an anchor point throughout Scripture. We see this in different stories that a lot of you will be familiar with. And so just as I mentioned just some of these almost vignettes or moments, you can think of it right away. Um, let's start with Adam and Eve. They were given a choice, an opportunity, right? Um, and then we had Noah. Noah had the choice to be true to God's heart. And he made a decision. And then we see Joshua, right? Uh, Joshua 24, verse 15. Choose this day whom you will serve. And many of this will resonate with us, right? This is one of those scriptural. But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord, right? That's a choice. Joshua made that a key moment. The Israelites' life will depend on the choices they make. Esther, she made a choice. And she risked her lives for her fellow Israelites. And then even Judas, one of the disciples, made a choice. We aren't just blindly obedient, but, you know, to a God who is distant and pulls strings. But we are able to uh, participate in the mystery of God's will. We can be part of the human story in response to God's love. Now, I would like to share three thoughts that are really rooted in this story with you. Um, one is, God chooses us. So I'll talk a little bit about that. And then, in response to that, we then get to choose what we value in response. And then we can, uh, finally, we can then act to bless others by giving them a choice. Now, the starting point is that God chooses us. Now, this is a real mystery of God's rulership, of his sovereignty, and our willing participation. 1 Peter 2.9, such a powerful passage. Well, let me read it to you. But... Um, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Now, Peter uses language that is echoing God's language um, of his chosen people, Israel. By following Jesus, we are chosen. But it is God's choice first. He has called us into this amazing life of meaning and purpose. Eugene Peterson said this, A human is not a cogwheel, not the keyboard of a piano on which circumstances play hit tunes, or parade music. We are chosen out of the stream of circumstantiality for something important God is doing. The blessing of being chosen gives us the joy of faith, hope, and love as we participate in God's mission. And in response to that, we can have the opportunity or we act of, uh, out of what we value. As we follow Jesus, we want to be aligned with what Jesus values. Now, as followers of, of Jesus, you think of these different values. Uh, we want to 
follow the example of Jesus in who he was. So we want to be like him. We want to act like him. Uh, we want to do what he does. And we want to say what he does. What did he say? Follow his instructions and his example. So we want to be like him, we want to act like him, and we want to follow his instructions and his example. Now, in the Hall of Faith, many of you will be familiar with this chapter in Hebrews chapter 11, where Moses is one of the, the figures. He uh, points to himself um, as an example as he was following God. It says, it was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called by the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose, listen to this, he chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. He thought it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking ahead to his greater reward. Imagine that. He saw it as greater value to be aligned with oppression and to be able to uh, stand with the poor. Now, at World Vision, our very DNA, the core of our DNA, is alignment with Christ's values. Uh, Bob Pierce, who's the founder of World Vision, famously wrote in his flyleaf of his Bible, he wrote these words, let my heart be broken by the things that break the heart of God. From the start of World Vision in Asia in 1940s, World Vision had invited Christians around the world to make a choice to choose to let your hearts be broken. I know that many of you have already made many choices that would reflect that value. And I celebrate with you. As we are amazed at how God chooses us, we can choose what we value. And then we are given the abundant life in Christ. Then out of that abundance, we're able to bless others. We can bless others by giving them choice. So what does it mean for Erickson Covenant Church? I don't know, do you, is it affectionately ECC? Yeah, yeah, I love it. What does it mean for ECC to follow, to experience that choice being chosen and then aligned by following Christ have that alignment of values, and then be able to bless others by giving them a choice. How can our choices bless others? Now, today I want to talk, provide you with an invitation to bless others in extreme poverty, acknowledging there's many different ways that we can bless others in our life and that it becomes a lifestyle for us but we are able to participate in the breaking of extreme poverty. We can help those um, in, in, in uh, places that are, are in the cycle of poverty, of, of um, both with food, of both uh, sometimes violence and these different areas. Often in the West, we think of poverty as material things. But in, in, in extreme poverty, one of the things that people don't have is actually uh, choice. And one of the things they experience um, is shame. And they can experience um, different aspects like that. But in, in scripture, we see this, um, this beautiful picture of God's posture towards the poor. It says in 1 Samuel 2.8, he lifts the poor from the dust and the needy from the garbage dump. He sets them among princes, placing them in seats of honor. For all the earth is the Lord's and he has set the world in order. 
God raises the poor and he seats them with princes. Isn't that great? He seats them with princes. It's this incredible role reversal. So people that experience not only a lack of material things, but people that are in um, a context of shame, um, inferiority, powerlessness, fear, hopelessness, isolation, that we can participate in moving them out of that world. It's not only um, in scripture that we can see choices are linked to poverty. We, we can also see this uh, even with the United Nations. They said this, fundamentally, poverty is a denial of choices and opportunities, a violation of human dignity. That was from the United Nations, 1998. I recently had the opportunity to go to Guinea, uh, Guatemala. And it was an incredible experience because I was able to participate with the church here in British Columbia to do what we're doing today on Chosen Sunday. And then I was able to go to Guatemala and experience the celebration on the field. And um, this is Jefferson. And Jefferson is my uh, child. And listen to this. He chose me. <laughs> and, uh, and, I, and, and we were able to, to do this as a family. So he didn't just choose me. But uh, it was such a, a wonderful experience. And uh, I just love being able to uh, meet his parents and, and see very tangibly the work that was being done and the change in his life. And, um, and we get to participate with that reality today that we can give children choice and opportunity. Uh, John 10.10 10 is one of the key verses at World Vision that we hold on to, and uh, which says, I have come to bring life, life to the full. Imagine if every child could experience the abundance of life and, um, and be part of what Christ offers for us. I want to talk a little bit about uh, the whole idea of child sponsorship and how we do that at World Vision um, so that you can appreciate how we approach it. At World Vision, we start with a conversation and we look at a, 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 an area that is in a real significant need. And we talk to the community leaders and we get their input and we work with them to see how can we help you be self-sustaining in the years to come. So we have a conversation understanding what we call an area project. This is a, a community where we invest for the sake of the child. It's a long-term commitment, usually 15 years. And we're able to see, uh, provide options like opportunities and development where kids can thrive uh, well into the future. Children can find dignity and empowerment. So not just material things or, or food, but other things that are um, invisible to the eye in some ways. We're able to help children find um, and experience God's love. And it's a community-based approach. So it's not just support independently for the child in the sense that we look at everything. And then we also try to find a sustainable solution, but it's based in relationship. It's, it's always a relational approach. Guatemala, I wish you could have come with me. As I met the, our field workers and I, met what we're, I saw what we were doing, everything was relational. And um, wonder, it was friendships and working with the children. Sponsorship is a two-way street. So it's not just a transaction, but it's a choice and an opportunity to participate in, in a child's life. So you can correspond with them. Uh, they write you. You're able to respond back and let them know what, how you're praying for them and what's going on in your life. Empowering kids to take the first step in changing their future. And as a sponsor, you can participate with that. Edgar uh, Sandoval, <clears throat> who provides uh, leadership for World Vision USA, he mentioned he was recently on a visit uh, with N.T. Wright. Uh, Dr. N.T. Wright is a New Testament scholar. 
And he shared one element that N.T. Wright um, uh, talked about that differentiates us as Christians from a lot of other religions and, and world beliefs. And I thought this was really interesting. He said this, we as Christians are called to participate here and now to wade right into the pain and turmoil of humanity and to be the instruments through which God brings his kingdom to earth. This morning, I am inviting you to participate in the here and the now. The opportunity to make a difference in a child's life that is unique, empowering, and transformative. Right now in Karawa, DR Congo, in the Democratic Republic, there are kids that are waiting to be sponsored. And in that context, in that part of the world, children are facing complex and prolonged crisis. Over 15 million children are suffering the impacts of armed conflict, hunger, and disease outbreaks. The country's humanitarian crisis has taken a severe uh, toll on the well-being of children. It is estimated that 15.5 million children need humanitarian aid. Now, some of the ways in which conditions are having a severe impact on children are violence. Sometimes children are even recruited into uh, child, to be child soldiers, which is heartbreaking. Lack of health care, which is really stretched. And then malnutrition and food security as well. Of course, malnutrition affects um, our growth physically. But even though this is the present reality for Karawa, you can have and make a powerful difference in Karawa. And by, part by uh, supporting and sponsoring uh, a child for $49 per month, this sacrificial act helps provide life-giving measures for the child, uh, which are education, economic livelihood, health, and child protection. However, um, uh, but as you walk out today, I, I, I want to invite you to do something. We're going to do something a little different. Now, I know in, in the past that some of you have uh, approached child sponsorship in the way that Canadians have been doing it for decades, um, and that is going up to a table and seeing the different children and then picking, picking a child. Well, we're going to have the child pick you. So we're going to have an opportunity for you to get your picture taken, and, um, and then we're going to send that to the field. And Thursday, there's going to be a party in Kerwa. And they're going to uh, be able to choose you and in a party. And today's a party, too. We've got balloons in the back. Today, we're engaging in the celebration of life today, right? Sharing the abundance, is that is something to celebrate? Um, but this Thursday will be a celebration. We're going to catch it on video. So you're going to be able to see this moment two weeks from today. Is that right, Tom? Um, how great is that? We call that Reveal Sunday. And you'll be able to participate that um, together. Now, I'm going to uh, transition to a video um, that gives you an idea of Chosen. And then, uh, and then we're going to have Tom come up. OK, let's, let's watch this together. In the heart of downtown Chicago, hundreds gathered who wanted to sponsor a child through World Vision. But unlike so many sponsorship events before, this one was a bit unexpected. Instead of having people choose a kid from a set of photos, like sponsorship's been done for decades, we did something that we've never done before.
Now, the choice is theirs. The choice to take hold of their future, to pursue their God-given gifts, to become change makers in their communities, and even the choice to step into a life-changing relationship with you. Twelve years ago, the Covenant Church in the Congo, uh, our family of churches, our denomination, the Evangelical Covenant Church, and World Vision asked the question, what might happen if we came together as the body of Christ, as the one great big church, in a bold partnership for the sake of ra a radically different future for the children in the Congo, for their families, and for their communities. And in response to that question, Covenant Kids Congo, powered by World Vision, was formed. This is a unique partnership, unlike anything else that's been done. And some of you heard about it because 10 years ago, we started this partnership. We got involved in this partnership. And at that time, 22 of the 200 across Canada partnerships that were part of that original seed group in the Covenant Kids Congo, 22 came from this congregation. Some of you were already part of the Covenant Kids Congo program. And that was in a different region in the Congo than, it, than, we're, than we're involved now. That's still ongoing work in, in Gamana. It's amazing. Uh, but I just want to let you know, this is part of a partnership that we're already part of. And now we're moving into a different region through the Chosen program in this unique way. Now, when children are sponsored, as you already heard Sean say, there's community-identified initiatives around clean water. We know how significant that is, don't we? Around nutrition, around education and health and micro-enterprise. These things can develop and they benefit everyone in the community. And three years ago, Covenant Kids Congo, this ongoing program, embraced Chosen. This flipping the script where kids get to choose their sponsors. Many sponsorship programs today, they uh, focus only on select children rather than working toward long-term community develop and development. And what, what uh, I love about World Vision, what makes World Vision unique is their sponsorship program, their, the monthly donations that we give, the 49 bucks a month, they bless the lives of all the children in the community where your sponsored child lives. They do this through long-lasting, sustainable development and your financial support in particular builds the infrastructure for clean water for, for good health support, for education and agriculture and economic development and advocacy. Through Covenant Kids Congo, powered by World Vision, you and I are able to sponsor a child. They can choose you from the Karawa region in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Now, I, I know I don't want to embarrass my family here, but the truth is we have a pretty profound connection to Karawa right here in the Erickson Covenant Church. Because in the late 1980s, my family, long before they were my family, Marvin and Darlene and Jody and Tino went, guess where they went? They didn't just go to the, to, to, to the Congo, they went to Karawa. And that's where they served for several years, sent there by this church, by Erickson Covenant Church, they were sent and served in the Karawa region. And it's in Karawa now that has had a long history of both our, our larger uh, covenant family at work, but has also had a long history of difficulty We've had a long history with them. We as the Covenant Church have been serving in the Congo in partnership with the, the Congolese people uh, since the 1930s. But now this new partnership with World Vision that has just blossomed over the last decade, we're now able to keep moving further into this gospel call, this responsibility and opportunity we have to see real change come and transformation come to this, uh, this area and to these people. So my challenge to you today is this. You've already heard it, but today I'm challenging you right after the service to go and take one of the most important pictures of your life. You can think of those important pictures of your life, you know, a wedding photo or both birth of a child. But this photo here that you're going to go, I hope, and get taken today has the potential to change someone's life profoundly. And not just theirs, but yours too. Because it's an opportunity into a relationship as Sean already outlined, but I want to outline it again so you understand. Um, 
the chosen child sponsorship flips the script. And so right at the back, we have a big camera ring, uh, a light ring set up. And there's, there's uh, some of our key uh, uh, volunteers who are from our missions team is there ready. And they're going to take your photo. And all you have to do is go to talk to one of them. And they'll help you sign up either through your phone or through these provided iPads. And then all you got to do is smile. <laughs> Practice with me. Yes, there we go. That's all you need. And I think it's kind of mind-blowing to think that as of tomorrow, the pictures that you take today, and those of you who are online with us, uh, you can also do this as well. And we'll, we'll uh, be able to share that with you. Um, but there's uh, an opportunity for you to, to, to get your picture tomorrow to Karawa. There'll be people in Karawa tomorrow who will be able to start printing these off. And here's where it gets very exciting. On Thursday, there's going to be a party over there. There's going to be balloons, and there's going to be food, and there's going to be music, and there's going to be kids and family, and your pictures are going to be hanging there on that string. You, Erickson Covenant Church peeps, will be hanging across the lines. And these kids are going to walk into a tent in Karawa, and they're going to get to choose you. I mean, isn't that, incre isn't that wild? Every once in a while in our digital world, even, the, even things surprise us even then, right? Like, wow, that is so cool. Your photo, these kids are going to make a choice. And there's a kid over there that on Thursday is going to look at your mug hanging on a <laughs> picture. You better smile nice. And they're going to look at you and they're going to say, that's, that's her. That's them. That's the guy. There's going to be something about the twinkle in the corner of your eye. There's going to be something about the glint of smile or the big beaming. There's going to be something about you that draws that child. And they say, I want her. I want him. I want them. They're going to choose you. And then two weeks from today, on Reveal Sunday here on November 24th, when you come into our service, you're going to see envelopes at the back of the church. And these envelopes are going to have your name on them. And in those envelopes is going to be a picture of a child who chose you. And they're going to be standing there holding a picture of you. Isn't that amazing? They might even say why they chose you. Like, wow, that guy was awesome looking. I'm not sure what they're going to say. But they're going to, they're going to say something. Of why they chose you. And then you have an opportunity to begin that relationship. To write back to the child who chose you. And begin a journey of transformation together. Not just for them, but also for you. And so today I am asking you to join me and many others to take part in empowering children, to change history, to make a difference. And I'm going to be real direct with you because I, I am direct with you. I'm just going to say it. It would be terrible. Would we agree? It would be terrible if there were seven sponsorships, seven people chosen wouldn't that be terrible? It would be an abysmal party in Karawa. I, I'm really praying. I, I'm, I'm applying a little bit of pressure here. I really am. I get it. But let's, let's, let's line up. Let's, get, let's be part of this. Let's send a good group of us over there to be represented in Karawa on Thursday to get chosen. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm really hoping and praying that we'll say yes to this. We'll line up and we'll say, hey, I want to be part of this. And so... Uh, this is such a profound opportunity to be chosen. I'm really excited. I'm excited about what we're able to do. I'm excited how we're able to amp up our partnership in the Congo. Little hint, I was talking to Sarah Pasco. She works with our Serve Global in Canada, and she told me, she confirmed for me this week that there might even be an opportunity to go there next year. Maybe. All right, so this, you know. This is a region we've worked in. This is a region we've sent missionaries to. This is a region, we've been, a region we've been supporting already. And here's an opportunity to get in more deeply for them and for us. God is doing something. And we get to participate in what he's doing. I'm excited about this opportunity where we get to flip the script, where a child gets to choose you, gets to make the choice, where the child is empowered right from the very beginning. And friends, I love you. I think you're awesome. I'd choose you. <laughs> They're going to choose you too. So join with me in this. Let's make it happen.
I'm going to close in prayer. We're going to go to coffee time. And we're going to stream to the back and line up and smile, aren't we? All right, let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you who poured out your life for us, who chose us and invited us into your mission, I pray that on this day, we will have captured a vision for what you want to do through us and in the lives of others, but also the what we want to do in our lives in this exchange. And so, Lord Jesus, call us into this. Help us to embrace what you're doing with joy, with excitement. We're excited for this opportunity. And so we bless you and thank you for, for the chance that we have to be part of what you're doing through this chosen program powered by World Vision in partnership with the Congolese uh, Church Covenant Church. Uh, thank you for this. We just want to be faithful, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to say one thing before you go because I just realized uh, you may think, you may be thinking today, oh, my, my kid's homesick or my some buddy's missing that should be in this picture. Have no fear. When you're signing up today, you also have the opportunity to provide a picture um, from your phone. There's other ways of, of doing that. Uh, if you're online, Sean, how do we, how do we, I just realized glitch here. Is there something we can put on the screen, the QR code? We'll be able to put that on the screen. Uh, is, do we already have it there? Do you know? You don't? What we're going to do, uh, what we're going to do here at the end, so for those of you who are with us online, um, I'm going to go to the back. We'll see if we'll flip a, 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 put our QR code up there for you so that at home you'd be able to just simply point at the screen and you'd be able to sign up as well. So just hang with us as I close the service. We're going to find that. It might take us a minute or two, but we're going to provide that for you uh, because you can do that simply on your phone. You can be part of this as well. You can sign up for it, put your picture on there, and that's what a lot of you can do. So if you are here today and you're thinking, um, I'm not looking my best, or I have a better picture, better family picture, have no fear, that's not an obstacle, all right? Okay, God bless you. I'm gonna come find a QR code, so just keep the, run, keep the things running there, tech. All right, God bless you.